As developers using cloud native practices, we should be using infrastructure as code to deploy our applications. And when we're talking about OpenShift and Kubernetes, the way to accomplish that is using Helm charts. Helm is basically a way of putting together some various Kubernetes resource files like deployment configs, YAML, config maps, ingress, service, service accounts, things like that, and turning those resources into a template where we can substitute in Go template language. The variables in the Go template language are provided from the values.yaml that's part of the chart. And we can also add in dependent charts. So instead of having to write a configuration for well-known services, we just call out to other charts that already provide infrastructure as code for those services. So if we look at my OpenShift cluster here, you can see that we currently have no projects available. So I'm going to switch back over to my IDE. I'm going to create a new project, OC new project, and we're going to call it ASP.NET Core Test. And when we switch back, you can see we now have a project. But in that project, there are no workloads, no pods, no deployments, nothing. So let's use Helm inside of our project to deploy our application. And the way we do that is with Helm install. And then we need to give it a unique identifier for each time we apply a Helm chart, either have a particular version or with particular values, uh, we can roll back those changes by referring to its unique ID. So I generally like to use something that looks like a semantic version. So I'm going to use v0-0-1 and I'm going to install the Helm chart from the local working directory, so dot slash. It just takes a few seconds, boom, and if we switch back over to my OpenShift console, you can see that it's already running. That's because I've deployed this a few times and all the container images are already locally cached, so it starts up very, very fast. One problem we do have, though, is that our database, this stateful set for our database, doesn't currently have our database schema in it. So we need to apply our database schema to this database. And the way we can do that with OpenShift is we can port forward a local port to a port on the database server and then run our migrations. Now, in the real world, we would want to do this using some sort of CI-CD process, maybe using Jenkins or, or uh, whatever CI-CD tool that you might prefer to use. So I'm going to do OC, well, actually first I'm going to switch over here. I'm going to do OC port forward on that pod. And then in my application implementation project, I'm going to run .NET EF database update. And that will apply all of our migrations to the database. Perfect. And we can confirm that by logging into PostgreSQL and listing our tables. Exactly what we saw earlier when we were running it locally in Docker. Now that we've done that, we can actually take a look at our application here, open up the route, and should we choose, we can create a new to-do using our API. So let's click Try It Out, click Execute, server. Oh, because I tried to specify the ID and the ID has to be generated. So let's try this this way. Server error. Interesting. Let's take a look at the logs and see if we can figure out why we're getting an error.
Right. That's what I forgot in our configuration. So if we go down here to our config map, we are currently referring to the database host name as being testing dash to do, but that is not what it's deployed as right now. We need to modify that. So it needs to be v0-0-1 dash to do. So if we save that, scale our application down to zero, Just waiting on that to uh, go from dark blue to white. There we go. Scale it back up to one. And wait for that to go to solid blue again. There we go. Excellent. Now, if we hit execute. Now, the first time you do these REST requests, it has to initialize the database connection. But uh, subsequent times, it won't take nearly so long. So we can go in here and string one, string two, execute. You see how much faster that went the second time around. But we're actually persisting data into our database and we're using Kubernetes in the form of OpenShift. I hope this has been enlightening and helpful for you. Please feel free to leave comments or let us know if there's anything else we can do to help you. Uh, there's a contact us link on the appdev.consulting.redhat.com website, and we're more than happy to try and produce content that will help you deliver more effectively in the cloud.